Nestled amidst the Huang Nian Son mountain range lies Sapa, Vietnam. Perched high above the Muang Hua Valley, we were treated to stunning vistas of terraced rice fields and buildings cascading along the steep, verdant cliffs. The cold, crisp air of Sapa made sipping at hot beef pho and rich Vietnamese coffee a daily necessity before we explore the historical town seasoned with French architecture and cultural influence. Between us reaching the summit of Vietnam's highest peak, Fancy Pen Mountain, and venturing low into the valley by foot in the enchanting village of Lao Thai, we were captivated by Sapa's unique charm and the resilience of its people. Standing atop the mountain peak embraced by high-speed rolling clouds as the valley momentarily unveiled itself was beyond anything we'd ever seen. And in Lao Thai, it felt like time stood still while age-old traditions intertwined with the rhythm of everyday life. Within just the first few days, we got to see my mom's birth country in a whole new light and couldn't wait to explore more of Vietnam. But first, let's take our journey to new heights at the rooftop of Indochina. Good morning from Sapa, Vietnam. It is absolutely beautiful today, albeit a little bit cloudy and a little bit chilly. But as you can see behind me, the clouds are starting to dissipate and we can see the beautiful town of Sapa. For our first adventure here in the northern part of the country, we're going to be heading to the highest mountain in all of Indochina, the Fancy Pan Mountain. To get there, we had to take three different sections of transportation, a monorail, a cable car, and a funicular up to the highest peak of the mountain. So let's make a 10 minute walk to the town center of Sapa to catch our first leg of the journey, the monorail. From Sapa Station, we took the monorail up to Huang Ling Station. And here is where you'll find the famous cable car that will take you all the way up to Fancy Pan Mountain. Now, the monorail was not what I expected at all. I expected maybe something more modern, but it looked amazing. It was super rustic, had a bit of European feel to it. And the entire ride up, it was just absolutely gorgeous with the rice fields, the low clouds. It's beautiful. Can't wait to hop on the cable car because apparently this is where you're going to get some of the best views over northern Vietnam. The Sapa cable car holds two world records. The first is the fact that it's the longest mountain crossing three wire cable car in the world. And the second is that it holds the largest elevation difference between the departure and the arrival stations at 1,410 meters. Now we just got off the mountain cable car. It took us 15 minutes to get up here and it holds 30 to 35 passengers per cable car. Because it's super windy and foggy, hopefully when we get to the summit, it'll be okay and we can see everything in the valley. But we're gonna be heading up on that last funicular all the way up to the peak. As you can see behind me, a ton of people are throwing on rain ponchos. Now we're not exactly sure why. Perhaps it's because when you're immersed in the clouds, you might get a little bit wet. But so far, I think we'll be okay. We threw on our puffer jackets. Again, like ketchup and mustard with our matching little colors. So yeah, let's head up to the funicular. Really windy and, uh, and I'll hopefully when we get up there that we can be above the clouds so then the views would be really amazing. So we made it up to the summit, but... We can't see a single thing. There is no sight of the Monghua Valley. And it's still so windy, 
Another thing to note is that a 3,143 meters up high above sea level, I definitely feel my heart palpitating a little bit just from that lack of oxygen. Yeah, definitely. We didn't climb up that many steps to get to the very summit here, maybe 15 or 20 steps. And you just feel so out of breath <laughs> just climbing those few steps. Can't believe it. The air is so much thinner up here. There are quite a few flags over here that you can grab for like a photo prop. I see mostly Asian countries, lots of people holding the Vietnamese flag up there. It's kind of cute. We chilled at the cafe for a good three to four hours waiting for the clouds to disperse. They finally started to around 12.30 and the valley is starting to reveal itself. So we came back up to the peak. My goodness, guys, the clouds do come in waves. So we're just sitting around here for a good few minutes every 30 seconds to see a bit of the valley and the ridge before the clouds come around us once again. A couple hours have now gone by and we were really hoping that the clouds would fully dissipate but unfortunately it did not. As you can see around me the clouds are still here. Don't get me wrong though it does create a really cool moody effect but we really wish we could see it just fully clear because honestly there's a lot of beauty around this area. Lauren and I are not gift shop people, but honestly, this is one of the nicest gift shops I've ever seen. Look at those cute little plushies all around the back. There's just so much variety here. It almost makes me want to buy something. So normally people usually spend about maybe two hours up at the top of Fancy Pan Mountain, but we literally spent, I think, a total of eight hours up there just because waiting for the conditions and we did not have a chance to grab any food. So right now we're going to head into town center and let's go grab a little lunch slash dinner. Walking around Sapa Town Center, we came across this restaurant that has a few floors that overlooks the town square. We're on the third floor of the Luk Nui Song restaurant, and you can see the beautiful mountains in the background. We already placed an order. We can't wait to dig in because we're starving. After dinner, we decided to go for a light stroll around Sapa Lake and hopefully we have some nice sunset colors popping out tonight. Tomorrow, we're planning on going on a little self-guided trekking tour through the valleys of Sapa. It's a really popular activity to do here, so we'll see you guys tomorrow. We woke up to such a clear day today, guys. It's definitely a step up from yesterday because we barely see a thing. It was so cloudy. But today, right from our room balcony, we can see the mountains, the rice paddies, the alpine forest, and the entire valley. Right there below me, you'll see Cat 
Cat Village, which is probably the most popular village that people will visit here in Sapa. Now from our hotel, it was a simple 20 minute walk from town center, probably closer to 10. Now, if you want to hire a guide or take a motorbike down there instead of making the trek at the very top of the hill, you can hire a bunch of these people. They have motorbikes, you can pay them a little bit of money and they'll take you right down to Cat Cat Village. So we are not at Cat Cat Village right now because when we read online, the ticket price is supposed to be 70,000 VND per person, but they really jacked up the price. It is now 150,000 VND per person. And for us, when we read a bunch of TripAdvisor reviews, it just didn't seem great. It turns out they really turned it into a very tourist destination. There's a lot of just souvenir shops and clothing shops, and they really try to haggle you to go and buy something. And for us, what we really wanted was to go and see the local mom people live their authentic way of life. And we just felt like that wasn't gonna be the right place to do it. So on our way back up from Cat Cat Village, we actually hired a scooter rider to take us to the east side of Sapa region. We're now heading towards the Lao Tai Village. It's so much quieter here. And I think the views here are actually a lot better than we saw over there. And you're not disturbed by all of this touristy stuff. So we're gonna keep walking downhill. We're gonna see a bunch of different bridges and hopefully we catch the different ethnic tribes doing their daily thing. As we approached the village, we caught sight of locals plowing the fields in the valley with the help of their water buffaloes, Vietnam's national animal. Not only adults, but kids too were preparing the patties for the new rice cycle. It was something out of a 50-year-old film as we watched the locals work the fields with no need for modern technology. The vibrant tapestry of a local Hmong culture unfolded in front of us as we reached Lao Tai. Women dressed in full black indigo garments with big weaves baskets on their backs motioned through the valley's trails effortlessly. The village center's market was draped with colorful handcrafted textiles and goods made by the hands of the village's various ethnic groups. Some of the goods are identifiably made by specific tribes who use their own distinctive colors and designs. It was hard not to buy every single item especially since the locals were never shy to pitch us their products marked by their unique craftsmanship. We came across a lady named Lala from the Black Hmong tribe who was eager to show us around her village and teach us about her and her family's daily life in Lao Tai. Though we could have continued trekking with Lala for hours in the mountains and across streams, we ended our journey and Lala's husband gave us a ride back into Sapa town before we grabbed our final dinner. Well, that was a really great meal. An amazing view with a delicious dinner was an awesome way for us to finish our final day here in Sapa. Honestly, our time here in Sapa has been a little bit less than ideal. From here, we can actually see the top of Fancy Pan Mount and it's looking so clear as opposed to yesterday. We felt like if we had just swapped our activities, if we did the village tour yesterday and did Fancy Pan today, it definitely would have been a little bit better, but that's okay. We're gonna make the best of what we're given. But our time here in Northern Vietnam is not finished yet. Join us next time as we do the Ha Giang Loop.